All right, everybody, this week I got for you the Scotch Whiskey Expedition Pack from Diageo. Check it out. All right, so regular viewers, welcome back. Thanks for watching. Realizing there's going to be a lot of new people on this video just because of the uh, subject matter. But if you're new to this channel, just know that what I do is focus on long-term reviews here. I usually start off with one video, which is my initial review of A Dark Spirit. I'll finish that bottle off just about and come back and give you a long-term review. Today, I'm going to be doing something a little bit different because I'm trying to branch out into the world of these fine scotches. And I saw this really nice expedition pack. So I wanted to get into here. I figured it would give me a, a range, a good survey of what's out there in the world, starting from the fruit and peaties all the way, you know, space side, Isla, islands, nice, good range. And this is an affordable way to get into that. With this pack, you get, as illustrated, five different whiskeys, and you also get two tasting glasses. So I don't see how you can go wrong with that. So first up, we're going to start off in Dufftown with the Singleton 12. Let's go ahead and check and see what they got to say on the website about this guy. So some basic information is this is an 80 proof spirit, aged 12 years. It's a space side from Dufftown. And what they do is it is a combination of whiskeys that have been aged in ex American oak and ex European oak aged for 12 years, then combined together for a unspecified time. So it doesn't say specifically about whether it's non-chill filtered or if there's coloring added, but I mean, I'm thinking if it was, they probably would advertise that. So we got to assume that it's not. Let's go ahead and go for the nose first on here. Nose is light and fruity. I mean, it's 80 proof, so I'm not getting a lot of alcohol as I would expect. Cheers, let's go in. Okay, so from my limited experience with Scotch, this to me fits that standard space side profile. You get fruits on the palate, low viscosity, with just a little bit of that, uh, the barley in here. I say the fruity notes are the star of the show on here, but 80 proof, age 12 years, um, can't complain on here. Let's see what else we got next. All right, so next up, we're going on a little bit of a journey away from Dovetown. We're going down to the coast. We're gonna check out Oban. According to their website, this is the Oban Little Bay, 86 proof. It's non-age stated. This is their entry level offering behind the Oban 14, which I've heard of before, but never tried yet. From what I can understand here, this is matured in smaller tasks than what they typically use. So maybe that helps with it, you know, pick up some flavor or add to the character. And again, geographically, this is from the port town of Oban, which is, from what I understand, a jumping off point for ferries if you're going out to some of the islands. So let's go ahead and get into this. Okay, so color wise, it's light like all the other ones, but 86 proof. So I'm expecting a little bit more oomph in the flavor here. Let's go ahead and check out the nose. Okay, so on the nose, what I'm getting is fruit, light fruity nose also, but more citrus notes as opposed to just like, you know, peaches, apples, stuff like that. Let's go ahead and go for the taste. Okay, so this is a little bit more interesting than a singleton. You get the fruit. On the singleton, the fruity flavors were the star of the show, but the barley was, was there. On this one, you get more citrus type of fruit, but there's just a little bit of, I guess what I'm picking up as a smoky taste at the end. Um, it's 86 proof, so it's not really viscous, but it's got a little bit of a finish on here. Teeny, 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 tiny wit. It gives you the fruit flavors, the citrus, a little bit of that smoke, and then it's done. So yeah, Oban, Little Bay, can't complain. All right, next up, taking you back to Dufftown. And by the way, I just realized, now that I've been getting into these, that Dufftown, Speyside, has a lot of distilleries. From what I understand, Glenfiddich is there, the Balvenie is right down the street, you know, you got this Mortlock, which is not far from there. And uh, again, there's just a lot, a lot going on. So anyway, Mortlock is the next one up. This is an age stated 12 years. Let's see what else we got on the website. So this is gonna be a little bit more higher proof off the top. The, the Little Bay was 86 proof. This is 86.8 .8 proof. This Mortlock 12 is 
almost triple distilled asterisk there's some story behind that i'll let you guys research that this is a 12 year old scotch that's been aged in that standard formula here we go again x sherry cast x bourbon cask now something that's a little bit different about the mortlock is that they use wooden worm tubs and in case you don't know what that is when you distill your spirit the alcohol evaporates out it goes through these copper coils and then you know that it cools in there and turns back into these wooden worm tubs are submerged in water so what i understand is if you use a wooden worm tub one of the traits about this is that it gives your uh, whiskey a little bit more viscosity more thickness so let's go ahead and check out the uh the mortlock 12. okay boom we got it in the glass color this looks to be a little bit darker than uh the previous two but not by much let's go ahead and check out the nose here so on the nose Again, from my experience, this fits that classic profile of a space side. You get the fruits on here, light fruits, standard. You heard it all before. Let's go in for the palette. Cheers again. Okay, so first impressions on the Mortlock 12. It's less complicated than the Singleton 12 or the, the Little Bay. This is a very good balance of the fruitiness mixed with the barley that's all i got to say this is something that you don't have to think about this to me so far is probably the best everyday drinker like if you don't want to think about anything i just want to just have a nice age stated scotch this one is the one so far mouthfeel is a little bit more full it's still it's still got that watery taste but it's got a little bit more body in here. No complaints. This is solid. And that's interesting because I haven't seen this on the shelf where I live at. So maybe it's not in this area. But yeah, more like 12. Can't complain about it. And according to the label, rich, fruity, and intense. I don't know about intense. I would say rich and fruity though. All right. So next up, we're going a bit on the journey. We're going away, away from Dufftown. We're going out to the Isle of Skye. Take you guys out on the water with the Talisker 10. So this is one I've been interested to try because people who told me, since they know I'm new into scotch, they said some of those standard offerings you get from like Space Island Highlands, those would be very similar. But they told me that when you get into these Island and Isla type of scotches, that's when you start seeing that peat influence. I don't know what peat tastes like. Again, it's my first time. So I'm interested in trying this Talisker 10. Let's see what they got to say on the website. So first of all, proof is going up in this whole range not sure if you guys noticed but the singleton was 80 proof the little bay was 86 proof the mortlock 12 is 86.8 proof this talisker 10 is 91.6 proof all right so highlights first of all this is a 10 year age stated scotch from the isle of sky it's matured in american oak cast there's no sherry influence here from what I understand, you should get some light peat in here because the water source flows over peat bogs. I'm going to assume there's color added here and it is chill filtered and similar to the Mortlock 12, they use wooden worm tubs also. So again, I was expecting from the Mortlock that there was going to be a little bit more viscosity and there was. I'm expecting the same thing. Let's go ahead and have a pour and get into the bottle of this. All right, y'all. So just being fully honest, I'm a little bit apprehensive because people told me that you may taste something that tastes like dirt. And I can't see how that could be palatable, but I'm kind of nervous. I'm hoping I don't taste anything that tastes or smells like dirt. Let me give you the nose. So on the nose, I'm not getting any fruit. Fruit's gone. I'm getting a little bit of smoke. And I mean, this is going to sound corny, but something that reminds me of the ocean. Not like, not if you're like right on the beach, but let's say, for example, in America, right? You're coming up on a beach town. When you're about maybe five miles out, you can start noticing like the salt in the air, kind of like, kind of faint, but it's still there. All right, let's go in for the taste. Palace good 10. Okay. So on the palate, I'm getting a little bit of that richness, that viscosity. Still watery overall, but more than the other ones. I'm getting a lot of pepper on here, like a lot of spice more than anything. Uh, Taste-wise, 
I don't think it's something that I would look forward to drinking, but to me, this kind of tastes like this is like a serious type of scotch here. Maybe this might be better with food. Not as like, I'm going to just sit back and watch a movie with type of whiskey, but maybe I'm going to have some food with this. Thinking maybe if you were having like, I don't know, some scallops or some seafood or something, this would complement that because it would kind of go with like that saltiness kind of, but just different. I don't really have anything witty to say. Just this one is is totally different. Now, with that being said, I don't taste a lot of dirt, or I don't know what peas taste like, but no, it just tastes it just tastes different. That's all. Tonsca ten different. Glad I got a chance to experience. Let's go on and move on to the fifth and final one. All right, last but not least, we got the Lagavulin, age eight years. Let's go ahead and do the knowledge on this one. So this is gonna be the highest proof of them all so far. 96 proof, age eight years from the Isla region, which is known for peat. So the way this is made, it's a combination of X bourbon and X sherry cast mingled together. This is in their core range. This is the entry level, eight years, and it's also non-chill filtered. If you don't know what that means, Google non-chill filtered. For me, usually non-chill filtered means I'm expecting to have like more character more, you know, nuance or something. Let's go ahead and get into this. So the first thing I noticed is that this is very light. So whatever cast they use for this probably are very old cast. There's not a lot of color that's getting picked up. Let's go in for the nose. So on the nose, you get more of that salt influence than you do on uh, the Talisker. I'm getting something on here. I don't know if that's the peat, but kind of something grassy kind of. No fruit on this one either. This is just kind of more of that saltiness kind of along with a grassy kind of thing. Let's go on for a taste. Cheers. Sort of lag of balloon. I don't know about this one. On the talisker, I was getting a lot of pepper at the end. I don't get that pepper on this one. The predominance of like a grassy kind of kind of taste with smoke. I'm gonna put this in that same category, something you wanna eat food with. I remember on the Talisker, I was saying that I might wanna eat some seafood with this, maybe some smoked salmon. I think with this, I'd probably wanna just have this with like, I don't know, like if I'm having like, you know, a, a nice char grilled burger or a juicy burger or a steak or something. I might want to have this beyond that. More of a food pairing than just uh, chill out and watch movies. So it's got character. It definitely stands out on its own. It's not like any of the other ones. It's closer to the Talisker, but not really. People keep saying tastes like dirt. This one doesn't taste like dirt. It kind of has like a grassy taste to it. Very interesting though. Very, very, very distinct though. Very distinct. Let me go ahead and wrap up. Okay, so in summary, now that we've gone on this Scottish whiskey expedition, we started off in Dufftown, went down to Oban, came back to Dufftown, went out to the Isle of Skye, finished up Isle of Region. I think you got to put these into two different categories. And again, my perspective on this is not from a Scotch expert perspective, but more from just a whiskey. This is dark spirits. Remember, I cover all spirits in the dark category. Rum, tequila, whiskey, Scotch, etc. I think when you get into these Scotch, you pretty much need to figure out what it is you're trying to do. If the intent is just to catch a buzz, get wasted, I think bourbon is more for that. A lot more inexpensive, a lot more variety, easier to get. I think when you get into these scotches, these are more about an experience, more of, I wanna experience the flavors here, the taste here. I think if you're a person who doesn't like really sweet things, you, you would probably favor scotch more. Out of the ones we tried today, I'd put these into two categories. I put these into categories of things you chill out with, watch, watch TV with, and things you'd have with a meal. The first three, the Singleton, the Mortlock, and the Oban, the Little Bay, I'd put those three into things that you would just chill out with, watch TV with. They got some complexity in them. I think out of the three, I think the Mortlock had the best mouthfeel and it was more no nonsense. 
I think that the Singleton was good, but at 80 proof, I just wouldn't go there. I think out of those three, I'd probably take the Oban just because it had this like citrus kind of taste to it and you got a little bit of smoke. So it's enough of a differentiator where you know specifically I'm drinking a scotch. First category. Second category, let's look at the, the Talisker 10 and let's look at the Lagavulin. I put these into the category of things that you would have a meal with. With the Talisker 10, I would say if you're having like a seafood dinner, maybe some smoked mussels, something else like that, boom, I think if you have the Talisker 10, it will complement that better. It would, it would pair well with that better. With the Talisker, you get a little bit of smoke on there. You get a little bit of peat. I don't hardly really taste it that much. So it's very interesting, more approachable. Now, when you go onto that Lagavulin, this to me is more something like I'm having something charred. Like I want... This, this would go well with like, if I'm having like a charred hamburger or a steak or, you know, maybe some ribs or something, something that has like a smokiness to it and you want to complement that, you know, you don't want to mess up the flavors. I think it would complement that well. So I'd put those into those two categories. Out of all the ones, which one would I buy again? Based upon my flavor profile, I think I would probably have to try the Oban, the Little Bay. And with that being said, I think now I'm probably gonna need to grab that Oban 14, since that's the flagship in the range. I wanna just see what that's all about. As far as the Taliskers, I might be more interested in seeing what they have to offer in that range. Check out some of their age stated ones. The Lagavulin, I don't think I'm there yet. Maybe as I expand into, you know, my Scott's journey, I might move in that direction. But to me, the way that I, drink whiskey is more along the lines of while watching tv while doing something else while having friends over playing cards something else like that i don't think that's something that i would probably go with but there was nothing wrong with it it's just different purposes so hopefully you enjoyed this video there will not be a long-term review this is the first reaction if you've had any of these let me know what you think maybe give me some advice what to do what not to do and i'll take it in mind thanks for watching dark spirits I'm out. I will see you next time.